Mic check one, two. All right, let's talk about it. Roll it. This is literally within five minutes of the closing of that performance we just watched at the halftime for Super Bowl. Clearly got friends and family telling me, asking me what I thought about it, asking me one to 10, yada, yada, yada. So let's talk about it. Is it better than the weekend's performance last year? Number one, because I'm clearly an Able fan, die hard, XO till we overdose, but I'm also clearly a fan of hip hop and a fanatic and an uh, uh, sommelier of hippity hoppities. So was it better? I don't even know if I could, I don't, was it better? I don't know. Overall, if we're talking about performance and we're talking about what it looks like, I think The Weeknd takes it because he did it all on his own. The vision was all his on his own. It was literally just him. He paid for did the whole thing on his own. The performance and the aspect of performing in terms of like theatricalness, The Weeknd probably takes it. But in terms of what it means, in terms of the overall just straight performance side, I think you can clearly say that this year's Super Bowl performance is probably gonna go down. I don't know, I can't speak for the other ones. Prince had a crazy performance. Michael had a crazy performance. But if we're talking about the overall intertwining of music and culture and sports, this is gonna go down as the greatest of all time. The greatest performance in history of Super Bowl halftime shows. This is a crazy moment, yo. It's a crazy moment. Rap and hip hop are not seen as anything that that is marketable to your everyday person. There's a very specific person that listens to rap and hip hop. And it's well documented that sports and rap and like they intertwine. So it's literally brothers and sisters. But because of political climate, because of advertiser pressure, because of we need to make things family friendly, even though rap is intertwined and could never be removed from the culture of sports and, and sports that specifically black men are gonna be predominantly the stars of. There's just, there's always been that disconnect between the sport and the music that, that the people who play it listen to and what's advertiser friendly. So it took 50, what, 50, how many, how many years has the Super Bowl halftime show been going on? It took that many years for the culture of hip hop to be accepted, to be able to be placed on the biggest stage in the world in a sport where predominantly black men play. It's a crazy moment for that. And not only that, yo, it's a crazy moment for rap and just California in general. Two of the biggest icons in rap music, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. California would not have the sound that it does if it wasn't for these two dudes. And people are gonna say, let's just, let's just talk about the performance, okay? So first off, we gotta get Eminem out of the way because that's what people are gonna wanna hear from me because that's what my channel was built upon. Eminem, I, my love for Eminem. My, every, if you're on the channel, you should know how, how deep, how deeply rooted within my music knowledge Eminem is. So what did I think about his performance? Goosebumps, clearly, Eminem on the stage with Dr. Dre, with 50 Cent, with Snoop Dogg, who there was beef about literally like a year ago. Crazy moment, yo. Crazy moment, super validating for Eminem fans. People are always quick to write off Eminem and Eminem fans because, you know, Eminem's not black. Ain't no way, like, he's no one's bumping Eminem in the hood. I disagree, but I get where you're coming from. He doesn't look like your average person. He doesn't attract your average audience, but I'm super glad that he finally, arguably he's the greatest artist or one of the greatest artists of all time in terms of sheer numbers of sales. So it's only right that on the biggest stage, we have the biggest artists and we're talking about the biggest artist in rap. It's only right that we have him up there. Cause rap, rap as rap would not be what it is today if it wasn't for the if it wasn't for the fan base that Eminem attracted back in his heyday in the 2000s. If it wasn't for him pulling that white fan base over to a predominantly black genre, rap would not be anywhere near as big as it is today. That's, that's just straight facts. Rock would still be number one. Rap would never reach that pinnacle if it wasn't for Eminem. The only disappointing thing about Eminem's performance, for me at least, but I understand it from a sheer from a sheer advertiser standpoint, is the fact that he did lose yourself. It makes sense 
A lot of people are gonna wa would have wanted him to do Lose Yourself specifically because of what he's talking about in the song and just like the get up and go get him nature. It's very like, it's very, it could be your walk up song for every baseball player. It could be your warm up song. It could be your walkout song for football teams. It's just, you know, one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. Literally the Super Bowl. It makes sense. And from an advertiser standpoint, it is definitely one of Eminem's more subdued songs. And I kind of, I wanted him personally to do Forgot About Dre, just because we had Dre and Eminem up there for the first time in a long time, if not ever. But I get how Eminem's verse in Forgot About Dre is probably not going to be crazy family or advertiser friendly. So what do you say to somebody you hate? Someone really trying to bring trouble you rage? Just study a tape of NWA. And when the cops came through me and Dre stood next to a burned down house with a can full of gas and a handful of matches, still no one found out. It's not that it's nowhere near as family or friendly as lose yourself in the music, the moment you own it, you never let it go. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. Like I get it. I get it, but I wanted more raw. I wanted more deep cut Eminem. And if we're talking about the performance in general, next up that we would be talking about is Kendrick Lamar because he has all of the eyes. He has all of the hype. He has, when is he dropping his next album? Is he retired? Are we ever gonna hear from him again? Like everybody is wondering where K-Dot is at. So when K-Dot came out, mad goosebumps, bro. But the only thing that I have to say about Kendrick's part, again, he also only had one song. He had All Right a solid song the, the the album in general i'm glad that he did it off of to pimp a butterfly because it kind of speaks to the race like the racial issues within the united states the whole album speaks to the black experience again it's the most advertiser friendly way for kendrick to be talking about the black man and the experience that that he has that they have without being like we stand with kaepernick i'm kneeling down you know what i'm saying so like i the only thing that I have to say about Kendrick's portion, one song is not long enough to to fully envelop around the art that Kendrick Lamar makes. And that's what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting it's not Kendrick's show. It's everybody's show. But whenever I see Kendrick, he is going to be the one that everybody stops to watch because his performance is while Eminem's performance was hype. Kendrick's performance is straight like watch you're watching a master at work when it comes to live performance when it comes to when it comes to like a theatrical style of performance and you could clearly see that you could clearly see that between kendrick and everybody else everybody else was rapping mary was singing the the hype was there but when kendrick showed up the whole vibe of everything switched there was choreography everybody was wearing all black against the white stage it's just a whole different beast when Kendrick performs. It is not something that it's not something that is there for the hype. There is intention and purpose behind every symbolic meaning that is a Kendrick Lamar performance. Personally, I think K Dot took it in terms of just straight power, but the most important thing across the whole show had nothing to do with K Dot, nothing to do with Mary, nothing to do with Eminem. It was strictly about Dr. Dre. And when I mean strictly about Dr. Dre, I mean the sense that most of those people on that stage would not be standing there if it wasn't for Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre and Snoop, icons in California culture and rap culture. Dr. Dre found Eminem, arguably the greatest rapper of all time and like overall rapper. Are there better lyricists? Yes. Are there better straight performers? Yes. I think Kendrick is a better performer than Eminem. But if we're talking about sheer impact into the culture, people are going to hate to hear it. But Eminem's the GOAT. But again, Eminem would not be standing on that stage if it wasn't for Dr. Dre. Surprise appearance from 50 Cent who came down in this in the in the scorpion curl out like he did in the in the music video for In the Club. That would not have been the surprise that it was had it not been for Eminem finding 50 and it wouldn't have been Eminem finding 50 if Dre didn't find Eminem. And just the overall culture, the impact that Dr. Dre has had, Mary singing her two, if there was two songs that Mary was gonna sing, I was hoping it was the two that we got and we got them and she did her thing. She looked good up there. She straight belting the shit. Everybody's a little out of shape up there. Not even gonna, not gonna, not gonna, I ain't gonna hold you as they say, a little out of shape and, and it is evident. 50 Cent came in off beat like he was like one second too late. I was like, oh shit, is he about to lip sync this whole thing? But nah, it was just like the cue in music. It was the background vocal, but he missed it. 
he missed it. We ain't gonna lie about it. But yo, what a time to be alive for California IA. I'm glad that they didn't bring out Tupac's hologram. That was that was rumored, that was mentioned. So I'm glad that they didn't do that. We still played a little bit of tribute to Tupac by playing California Love. Anderson Pack was a was a big was a big surprise for a lot of people, including myself. I'm glad that he was on drums for Eminem. That was super fire. He is from California, if I'm not mistaken. So that makes sense why he's up there. Bro, we got we're see we're we're crib walking on the main stage. The only more powerful crib rocking I've ever seen is Serena Williams at Wimbledon, I believe. It was a joke, it was lighthearted, but just the symbolic nature of Serena Williams, a black woman who infiltrated and dominated a white sport. One of the, if not the greatest pound for pound athlete of all time, crib walking in the middle of Wimbledon. It's crazy, yo. I couldn't even imagine being a being somebody from California right now in the middle of SoFi Stadium, most gorgeous arena I've ever seen in my life with all of your biggest icons and inspirations and people that you grew up with. The whole halftime show just reminded me the sheer star power, the star power of Snoop Dogg, the rapping capability of Snoop Dogg. I forgot how fire those tracks were, but just the overall importance of California in rap music and the overall importance of Dr. Dre. Performance was fire, yo. Goosebumps all throughout. At the end of the day, I don't think that they could have done that performance any better than it was. I think we got the best out of everybody that was up there on that stage. Crazy, yo. What a time to be alive.